Now we are gonna um, talk a little bit about one of the uh, structures that is up there together with FLC as one of the most spe plan specific structures <laughs> um, that you can actually be studying. And um, it's good that actually Jill introduced the name because I cannot say it very well apparently. It's plasmodesmata. And these are uh, these small channels, channels that connect um, neighboring cells and that um, connect basically the cytoplasm of neighboring cells. Um, through the plasmodesmata, there are many uh, molecules that are transported. And this is because they provide a, cy a cytoplasmic continuum so that two cells are actually not completely separated, but they can allow the transport of metabolites, small RNAs, hormones, but just by diffusion. A small molecules can be transported through plasmodesmata from one cell to the other. But they also, and more interestingly, they allow the, the transport of more bigger molecules, such as transcription factors, viral movement proteins, uh, microRNAs, so, and they do that in a more active way. So there are some factors that chaperone the transport through plasmodesmata. So, not surprisingly, from the variety of important regulatory molecules that move through plasmodesmata, they have a strong impact in plant development. And this was a very well studied uh, in virus infection, so plasmodesmata mediate the systemic uh, virus inv invasion, but uh, also they uh, mediate the plant response to other pathogens, including bacteria and fungal, path fungal pathogens. Here you see a beautiful work from Christine Faulner, my uh, colleague, which uh, found that mutants in a plasmodesmal protein actually improves uh, sensitivity to Botrytis cinerae. Also in plant development, plasmodesmata are important, and I showed that uh, back in 2009, where we saw, we saw that plasmodesmata mutants actually are altered in root development, but also in shoot meristem maintenance, and even in a more mature state, is also affecting flowering time. But all these pictures come from Arabidopsis, so there are many of you here that are uh, thinking why I should care, it's just Arabidopsis. But that's not the case. As you could see here, there are mutants in plasmodesma that are also uh, being identified in other agricultural crops, such as maize. And they has, it has been seen that actually changes in plasmodesma transport affect the transport of nutrients from leaf. And as you see here, it affects leaf morphology and also plant development. Here you can see another example between rice cell walls and invasive aphid from rice blast fungus move through plasmodesmata between cells. So I think that I can convince you that these channels actually uh, deserve a little attention and we should talk a little bit about them. So let's look at the channel mo more in detail. Here you see a tomograph where uh, plasmodesmata, and as you can see from here, they are inserted in the cell wall. So they provide a continuous between cells, just the cytoplasmic continuum, but they are delimited by uh, the plasma membrane, but also by a good component, have a good component of regulation from the cell wall. And this regulation is actually uh, mediated by the deposition of a cell wall glycan that is very specific of plasmodesmata size. And these are the glycan uh, calos. That thanks to Yil, we also hear that name that uh, war again today. So calos deposits in plasmodesmata sites, and as you see here in this immunolocalization study, you can see that calos in green here is deposit along the cell wall in a punctuated pattern. And if we would see um, through a tomograph, we could see that this punctuated pattern corresponds to plasmodesmata site. So what is the model? How calos control plasmodesmata transport? So increased calos deposition basically provides physical constriction in the channel. So the cytoplasmic aperture is reduced. So the movement of molecules from one cell to another is just basically restricted. We study a bit more about the mechanisms underlying this regulation of calos and plasmodesmata sites. And we did that by looking at the proteins that mediate calos synthesis and degradation at plasmodesmata. These are named beta-glucanases and calosynthases. 
So we, uh, from a proteomic screen that was done at the GIC, we could isolate several proteins that were uh, located at plasmodesmata, including families of these beta-glucanases, named PDBGs. These families uh, of proteins is a very large family, but not all of them are actually located at plasmodesmata sites. And uh, further work that I did uh, um, as a group leader showed that actually uh, the ones that are related with plasmodesmata are in a conserved clay within the, the phylogenetic tree, and this uh, clay actually evolved in the early embryophytes. And this is the paper if you want to know a little bit more about this study. But what was interesting is that the pattern of, this, uh, of expression of these glucanases is very different, providing a little bit of a specificity in the regulation of calos in the different uh, cell types. Uh, one of these glucanases, PDVG1, had a very nice pattern corresponding to a lateral root initiation and lateral root uh, development. Mutations in these glucanases and in a very close relative led, as, as, as expected, in a reduction in symplastic transport, so in plasmodesmata transport. And this is demonstrated here in this picture, where we uh, use GFP as a symplastic reporter. In this case, uh, driven by the SOC2 promoter, which is expressed specific in the flowing companion cells, and from where GFP can actually escape and move into the neighboring tissue, in this case endodermis and cortex. So our mutants show a restricted transport of this uh, symplastic reporter, showing indeed that this beta-glucanases, so mutation in this beta-glucanases restrict symplastic transport through plasmodesmata. Um, not disappointingly, given the very specific uh, expression of this beta glucanase in lateral roots, they actually show a lateral root phenotype. So the mutants uh, increase lateral root number and, this, uh, and produce these uh, beautiful clusters of lateral root. And this can be also verified uh, using uh, markers lines such as DR5. You see that lateral root initiation sites are a cluster are basically uh, nearby, different for what happened in wild type. And similar phenotype, you can be, it can be seen by uh, using the GATA23 uh, reporter line. So from there, we got a model where uh, Carlos deposition was actually involved in determining the patterning of lateral roots. So movement of a signal potentially from uh, the initiation side of lateral root is probably uh, necessary to actually determine the distance between lateral roots. So in the mutants, where we have an increased callus deposition, this signal cannot move. So what yeah. happened is that we get a distorted patterning of lateral root. And this could be, again, uh, confirmed using uh, uh, another line, callosynthase 3, that is an activated version of a callosynthase. So again, produce an increased accumulation of callos in at plasmodesmata. And this was expressed on the uh, promoter that drive expression to the silent pore pericycle in a, in a transactivation fashion. And again, you can see that there is the same phenotype that we saw in the PDBG1-2 mutants. So increase callus deposition, get a more clustering of lateral root, which can be quantified. So from, those wor from that work, from that part, we can conclude that actually callus is a key regulator of plasmodesmata transport. I hope that I com convinced you that proteins that are involved in callus turnover are regulating uh, callus in situ, target plasmodesmata to regulate callus in situ, and uh, the expression of these proteins actually determine plant development, and interestingly, is important for proper lateral root initiation and patterning. So we went um, early, um, like a two, two weeks ago, this paper actually in Plant Cell uh, got published where we actually pursue a um, good collaboration, a really uh, useful collaboration with uh, Manuel Bayer Lab in uh, Bordeaux. Uh, Manuel actually show that plasmodesma are actually lipid raft membranes. So they show this um, profile that uh, is high in sphingolipids and esterols and can characterize lipid raft membrane, which are uh, signaling membranes. What this is important because 
we show uh, with Emmanuel that actually the expression of the beta-glucanases is dependent of these lipid raft membranes. So if, uh, if uh, chemicals to distort the sterol composition of this lipid raft, lovastatin and phenimpropamorph are applied, the localization of PDVG of the beta-glucanases is uh, missed. And correspondingly with this, we have an increase in calos deposition in the, in the protofloem, which leads to a restriction in symplastic transport. So as you see here again with the SOC2 GFP line, you see that there is transport in the root tip in the control, and when the sterol, the plasma membrane composition in esterol is distorted, then um, uh, GFP again gets restricted. So we can actually reapply this conclusion a little bit more, and now we know that these proteins involved in calos turnover depend on their localization to plasmodesmata, uh, to this uh, lipid raft uh, component in the plasma membrane. And that not only changing the expression, but the localization of these beta-glucanases can affect intercellular transport and plant development. So what next? Where are we moving forward with this? So we are looking a little bit more on roots, and in this case, we, um, we are actually pursuing uh, more uh, um, uh, issues related with the environmental uh, response of roots uh, in the soil. And in that aspect, uh, we are uh, working uh, in looking at what is the role of plasmodesmata in the root response to oxidative conditions. This is a preliminary assay where uh, mutants or plants that have a decreased calos deposition and an increased calos deposition at plasmodesmata, so they are affected in transport, uh, were exposed to hydrogen peroxide. And as you see here, the plants that have high calos deposition uh, show we're more are more sensitive at these hydrogen peroxide conditions. And now we are looking more into what is the mechanism um, um, underlying this response. Is plasmodesmata transport involved? Is that the reason why? So there is any, any factor that is required to move to actually uh, respond to oxidative stress. We are also looking at other organs. So we talk here about lateral root primordia, but we are also interested in nodule initiation since um, the group of Martin Crespi long time ago uh, now show that symplastic connectivity is also regulated in the nodule initials. And as um, very nicely Miriam showed today, uh, we are not very far away. So lateral roots primordials and nodules actually have very similar uh, mechanism of formation. So we um, preliminary result from my lab that has been unpublished, uh, that, that are not published yet. Um, you see here that with an immunolocalization, again, with callous antibodies, that uh, the region surrounding the nodule primordia is a little bit depleted in callous in comparison with the nearby region. And we are looking more into what are the factors that are regulating callous in those root nodules. We are following up our phylogenetic uh, uh, um, trees to look for uh, candidates uh, that are involved in the response to uh, uh, rhizobia and following uh, also the data uh, transcription, the transcriptional data to uh, verify these candidates and uh, looking forward to, to look for mutants in these uh, candidate genes. And with that, I want to thank especially uh, the mentors in, in Plasma Desmata for me, that are Professor Andy Moll and uh, Dave Jadson in GIC and Cold Spring Harbor. My um, lead team, very small now. <laughs> Rocio is uh, the main driver at the moment, and she did a lot in the work uh, with uh, nodules. And my main collaborators, who is uh, my longtime collaborator, Christine in the GIC, Emmanuel Bayer in Bordeaux, Paul Knotts at the University of Leeds, Hilary Utah in uh, Sainsbury Lab, Veronica, Jeremy, and Giles at the GIC, and uh, funding from the different bodies. Thank you, and I'm happy with any questions.